Hi, I'm Kara and welcome to camp where college applications are made perfect. I'm a freshman in college, so I just finished the college application process and now I am here to explain it to you. As always, timestamps to skip to specific topics as well as links to important resources are located in the description box down below. Today we are going to be talking about paying for college. We're going to be talking about the two main ways to pay for college, need-based and merit-based scholarship aid as well as some terminology you might hear as you're looking at paying for college and how to get and keep your scholarships. I am a member of one of the most generous undergraduate scholarship programs in the country and college is not costing me a cent. So keep watching to figure out how you too can save money when you go to college. Let's begin by defining some words you might hear as you're looking at paying for college. These words are grant, scholarship, aid, and loan. So a scholarship is any sort of money that is given to you for specific education related purposes. And it's like a gift. So when you get a scholarship, that's not money you have to pay back. It's money that is yours to keep to use for your education. A grant is very similar to a scholarship and that it's money that you do not have to repay. It's sort of a gift to you. However, grants are usually based on your financial need. So they're generally need based. A loan is money that you are expected to pay back with interest by a certain date. So sometimes companies will try to talk you into taking out a loan by equating it to a scholarship. Just know scholarships are money that you get to keep. Loans are money that you have to repay. So anytime you see the word loan, that's money that you're going to need to pay back. Finally, aid is simply the amount of money that you receive to cover education related expenses. So taken as a whole, all the money you have for college would be considered your financial aid. Two extremely important concepts to understand when you're looking at applying for aid for college is going to be the difference between need-based scholarships and merit-based scholarships. So a need-based scholarship is based on your family's income. So the less money your family has coming in, the bigger your need-based scholarship package or your need-based scholarship will be. Generally, this is based on your FAFSA. So after you fill out your FAFSA, you'll then use the FAFSA to apply even to outside need-based scholarship applications. So that's kind of the way that you do need-based scholarships. In contrast, merit-based scholarships are based on merit. So that can be academic achievement, it can be extracurricular achievements, it can be athletic prowess, anything that you feel like you really stand out in. This is the most common type of scholarship and it is totally separate from your family's income. We'll speak a little bit more about how to earn as much money as you can from those two categories in a moment. But first, I really want to touch on some important info about paying for college that I wish I had known before I began applying. The first is that the biggest amount of scholarship aid that you get when going to college is going to come directly from your university. So rarely is the sort of ticket price you see on the university going to be how much you're actually going to pay to go there. What will happen is once you've been admitted, a university will send you what is called a financial aid letter, and that will lay out all the scholarship aid, including need and merit-based scholarships that the university is willing to give you, along with a summary of how much it will actually cost to attend their school. So when you Google universities, it's a good way to ballpark prices like a $75,000 a year school is never going to be cheaper than a $20,000 a year school no matter how generous the aid that they're giving you is however that is likely not the actual amount you're going to be paying so if you see $75,000 but your parents are only willing to pay $55,000 then maybe just see what you get in your financial aid letter and see if you can negotiate with the school to get a little bit more my second tip is that scholarship websites that cycle through hundreds of scholarships a day are not going to be a great way to pay for college. So websites like scholarship.com and FastWeb, while a great way to spend some extra time uh, with some potential, have so many high school students applying for all those scholarships all the time that unless you're willing to really dig through the website and write a bunch of essays for scholarships and things like that, the chances of you actually earning a lot of scholarships there are pretty low. So a great thing to do when you have some free time, yes, but a foolproof way of paying for college, they are not. The third thing is that FAFSA can recommend loans. So when I filled out my FAFSA, I didn't get any grant money, but I was recommended a loan. So just keep in mind, make sure you check when you get your letter back if what you've qualified for is grant money, which is money that's a gift, or if it is a loan, which is, remember, money that you have to pay back. However, if you do decide that you want to take out a loan, the U.S. Department of Education recommends that you exhaust your federal loan options before turning to private loans. So I have a document with more information about that linked down below. Just keep in mind that FAFSA might offer you money, but it might be money that you need to pay back. 
this kind of leads us into need-based aid. So unfortunately, need-based aid is not an area I have a ton of experience in as my family didn't really qualify for any. But if you are low or even middle income, you can use your FAFSA to attempt to apply to need-based aid scholarships. And they'll generally let you know about what their cutoff is. Um, and there are so many need-based scholarships available out there. A lot of them will be available through your college. So that's always a great place to look. If you know where you're going, look on their website, look for need-based scholarships. I have also linked several documents down below with a little bit more information about how to find and get need-based scholarship. Merit-based scholarships, on the other hand, are an area that I am very qualified to talk about. So a merit-based scholarship is generally based on something like academic achievement. I mentioned a couple of other areas before, and that will generally come from your university. So when you get your financial aid letter, they will tell you if they're giving you a merit scholarship. Keep in mind, merit scholarships are usually just a couple thousand dollars knocked off the college ticket price. So it's not necessarily money that you're going to pocket when you get a merit scholarship, but it means that college will be just a little bit cheaper. Something to keep in mind is that because most of your merit money will come for you from your university, it really matters which university you're looking at attending. So if you apply to universities that have thousands of super highly qualified, super high achieving students applying to them every year, some Ivy League schools come to mind, then they're likely not going to be very generous with merit aid. They're probably going to give out more need-based aid. However, I knew I really wanted to get some merit scholarships, so I applied to much smaller, more generous schools. It's definitely worth the time, if you're hoping to save a lot of money for college, to look at schools and see which ones have more generous scholarship programs, particularly for merit scholarships. Um, look at schools that have full rides. Apply to schools that you know give out a lot of scholarship money, and that's the way that you're going to save the most. Of course, while we're on the subject of merit scholarships, you know I have to plug my school. I go to UTD. Uh, I'm a member of the Eugene McDermott Scholars Program, which is their full ride scholarship program. I get room paid for, tuition, they pay for my textbooks, I even get a monthly stipend. Um, it's a super great program. If you are a high achieving student and you meet the qualifications, I would totally recommend going to their website, checking them out. And in general, if you know that you want a free full ride for college, even if it seems like a long shot, apply to as many programs as you can. You can never apply for too many scholarships, right? However, I do want to circle back around to the online scholarships because you might not get as much money as you hope you will get from your college. So while I've kind of said that maybe the online huge scholarship at websites aren't the best way of getting scholarships, I would recommend if you're interested in pursuing outside scholarships to talk to your high school counselor. So they will have local scholarship opportunities that generally have way fewer students applying for them, but are very generous in terms of the amount of money they're giving out. So talk to your, your high school counselor, see if they know of any of these scholarship opportunities, maybe do some research in your community. If there's a cause you're super passionate about, let's say you know that you love politics, go to individual websites for different political organizations, things like that, and see on their website if they have any scholarship opportunities and apply directly through them. And that will sometimes increase your chances of getting those scholarships. To keep your scholarships, there sometimes might be things that you need to do. So I got a scholarship from my, my high school. My high school does a scholarship. And in order to keep that scholarship, I have to send them my transcript at the end of every semester. So it's important if you get a scholarship that does something like that to make sure that you're staying on those requirements. So I have a calendar alert set up every end of semester to make sure I send that to them, right? It's never worth getting a scholarship and then losing it because you weren't willing to put in the time. So as long as you keep working, once you get the scholarships, it's super easy to keep them. Just make sure you keep putting in the time. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. As always, this is a huge subject. So I have some links down in the description box below with a little bit more information on certain topics. And of course, there are so many other resources you can go to out there for a little bit more information. However, I hope this was a good overview. And thank you guys, as always, for coming to camp.